Hello, and welcome to the session of Talking Tech, Women and Girls in ICT. My name is Arusha Agarwal, and I'm, today, I'm delighted to be representing Unknown 16, an organization that is dedicated to closing the gender gap in STEM, and also the hackathon Reboot the Earth as a virtual winner USA. And I'm excited to be having a discussion about tech and tech careers with Emily Bennett, Businesses and Relationship Manager at UNICC. Talking Tech is a series celebrating girls and women in tech, recorded around the world between Girls in ICT Day 2020 and Girls in ICT Day 2021. Girls in ICT Day is an international day marked on the fourth of fourth Thursday of each April. In 2020, Girls in IT, ICT Day was on 23rd April. The objectives of Girls in ICT Day are to help to create a global environment that empowers and encourages girls and young women to consider studies and careers in the growing fields of information and communication technologies. The Talking Tech is a series brought to you by the ITU, UNICC, and is in support of the Global Partnership for Gender Equality in the Digital Age. Unknown 16 is pleased to be a partner on the session today. To kick off this session, I'm going to introduce to you Emily Bennett from UNICC. She's a business and relationship manager and works to discuss how ICC helps to efficiently and securely, technologically empower their organization's goals and programs. As someone who has professionally acquired acumen in satellite based connectivity, security, empowerment net networking, application development, and process automation, I'm very much honored to have a conversation with Ms. Bennett as someone who shares the skill sets in technology and the passion to develop solutions for real life challenges. For more information, you can visit unknown16.com. Now I'm delighted to now shift the conversation with Ms. Bennett. To start up, I would like to ask you, when and how did you get into technology? Um, I came into technology through a series of experiences in my career. I started in marketing for technology uh, related business, which was um, marketing for Cisco and NetIQ firewalls uh, when I first uh, exited my, um, my studies. And I was so interested in learning about how the technology worked that uh, it, it helped me in order to be able to execute marketing plans um, that were really relevant to what the technology did. And so I learned a lot more about how things work um, and about how um, marketing for technology works. And this is sort of what started my career path in tech. That sounds amazing. <laughs> sure, a couple of examples of things that you've done in tech that you're extremely proud of. Yeah, um, since that time and more career growth, I entered working into an organization that executed satellite-based satellite communications. And one of the projects that I worked with for that firm was deploying emergency telecommunication services to um, places that had uh, conflict or specific emergencies, weather-related, things of that nature. So one of the projects that we worked on was deploying um, a kit to be able to facilitate connectivity in Syria when there was a, a good deal of conflict. And so from coordinating the business side of things to ensuring that all of the pieces of equipment and technology were there, um, making sure all the link budgets were appropriately sized and then coordinating with engineering to actually implement the link when all of the equipment arrived in Syria. It, um, it was one of the projects that I was mm, most excited about. It was very critical and at the same time um, it helped uh, quite a few people to then more effectively and efficiently and safely carry out their day-to-day -day work knowing that they had means of connectivity and support um, for communication. So that was one project. And then after I worked in satellite-based communications, I went to work for um, a networking and security organization. And with that organization, one of the projects that I was most interested or, or I thought was a lot of fun was um, 
a, a business issue that one of my clients had where they needed to implement more security tools, continuous monitoring, but they had a very fixed budget. So one of the things that we worked on was how to save money on um, some of the things like site-to-site -site connectivity, how to save money on, um, let's say, firewall services, things like that, and transform that into a program where there was more security monitoring mechanisms in place. So that includes things like endpoint monitoring. Um, it includes uh, continuous monitoring tools like a SIM and a SOC, and how to build a holistic program from end to end that ensured um, that the network was set up in a safe way and maintained that safe security stance. But at the same time, there was enough budget and enough tools in place to monitor in case of a threat. And this entire process, the tools, the program, the people, all of the different components that go into um, creating a, a comprehensive security stance that was really fun and really fascinating. And as a result, the counterparts that I worked with, the technology counterparts in that organization, um, they were kind of praised by their management um, because they went from a from a standpoint where they were audited and, and the auditors had a lot of concerns about the security of their business to a place where they implemented the tools so that uh, executives in the organization could feel safe about their reputation. And um, the organization itself was, is really large and quite global. So um, let's say they could uh, minimize their attack surface. And that for me, was a really rewarding project because it made people feel safe. I mean, it's really amazing how you're able to bring in so many different factors like budget, communication, and then help a lot of people in return. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, that sounds like an amazing project. And what are some of the solutions that you're working on now? So right now, um, I'm involved with a project which is bringing robotic process automation into organizations. So how to more efficiently help people to execute their work. And sometimes that's setting up um, robotic process automation work streams um, to connect systems, to be able to execute workflows that are things like comparing spreadsheets sometimes, things that maybe could help a person facilitate their work either more accurately when you have to compare a lot of data all at once, um, screening processes, that kind of thing. So this is a really interesting um, project that we're working on with one of my partners. And um, it's something that I'm learning about in the process too, because I talked a little bit about my background and um, before coming to UNICC, this is not something that I had a great deal of experience in, but I was really excited. My first week coming to UNICC, I was able to participate in a learning opportunity with a couple of different um, of our partners. Uh, who f help us facilitate the robotic process automation tools um, so I could acclimate myself a little bit to the solutions and learn along the path. And um, because of the way that UNICC works, I'm also paired with a, a technology subject matter expert, which means that as projects kick off, I get to learn a little bit more about that in a, in a, context, in a contextual way too. So it's a lot of fun. Sounds amazing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, through these, all these projects, have you encountered any kind of challenges along the way? And if so, how did you overcome them? Sure. Um, I think that there's challenges in, pro in many projects, in all projects, really. It's very unlikely that you mm, encounter a project where everything goes perfectly all the time. I think a lot of the way in which to approach challenges is through talking about um, facilitating solutions. So uh, solutions actually may not necessarily be technology related. Uh, solutions may actually be facilitating more people to help or a more refined process um, or potentially leveraging different or more technology to help. But my role in these types of situations is really to look at all of the factors that help solutions take place and then try to find along with uh, technology subject matter experts and say 
uh, different people within UNI and ICC or our partners the right mix of things to help make everybody feel successful and for us to really extend the, the right mix of the solution um, to accommodate that challenge. Okay. All right, thank you. And you know, since we're on this topic of projects, how can a high schooler like me get involved in some of your projects? So the first thing I would say is try to identify the things that you're passionate about. Um, I think, let's say, identifying what you think you might be passionate about and pursuing those types of projects is a, is a good first start. Um, I think you've already, in a way, started to get involved in, in, in technology-related projects within the UN. So you could see that your passion, particularly for climate action, is a wonderful place to start. Um, I think that ICC has a lot of projects of, in a similar kind of sentiment um, and that uh, continuing along your educational path, pursuing your passions and then trying to align those passions specifically uh, to working with an organization like UNICC, aligning that vision towards the SDGs is really key. And um, I hope through your interactions with um, the UN and, and the summit and such that you've been able to create uh, some contacts and to be able to keep an open stream of communications because I think one of the ways in which to help is is to kind of continuously be involved see what comes up see with with what you're creating what makes sense to pair with an organization like UNICC or potentially others. Great, thank you. I'll definitely keep that advice in mind. And since the series is about girls and women in technology, do you have any career or tech advice for girls and young women in tech? Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily technological advice, but I would say some of the underpinning characteristics of people who are um, pursuing a career in technology. Um, much like your concept of supergirls, Hershey and unknown16.com, uh, things like curiosity and passion and um, remaining wondrous and pursuing your interests. And um, I think it, it ignites, it ignites um, action. Uh, so maybe it's not so transparent in the beginning, especially when you're a young person and 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 looking to see what you might want to do with your career path. I, I think some amount of curiosity and pursuing different paths and seeing what fits over time, that's probably uh, some advice that would have helped me when I was a bit younger. Okay, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. And I'm sure the viewers that are watching would definitely heed to your advice and would be able to pursue their passion. So, on that note, um, do you have any questions for me? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm really interested in how your idea for Unknown 16 started. Could you explain a little bit to me? So, I started Unknown 16 about a year ago. So, when I was in ninth grade, transitioning between eighth grade to ninth grade. And so, first of all, I've been a robotics team for about three to four years. I started when I was in seventh grade. And in my second year, so when I was in eighth grade, out of the 16 members, only two of them were girls. So that kind of, that didn't really set well with me. With me. And as I was kind of, I was young, I wasn't sure how to respond that only, you know, in the STEM related field, in this modern world, why were only two out of 16 people girls, right? Were the, why were only two out of 16 people female? And then the same year when we went in, when we went to world championship, I was sort of brought into this whole new world, this whole new experience where I met so many other people, so many other girls, all girl robotics team, and so many other people in STEM, like um, people that have careers in um, technology, just like you. And that presented me with an opportunity that if there are girls out there that have confidence in coding, why can't I build that same confidence and empower the same girl, um, other girls like them. So that's why I started Unknown 16, which is dedicated to empowering and closing the gender gap in STEM. 
And we do this by teaching them, right? Building their skills and technology. I have curriculums for um, Scratch, Python, Java, where I take classes, I help them, you know, really know that you got this, right? You don't have to be afraid of anything. Mm -hmm. It's not a scary world, right? If you're passionate about this, if you really want to do this, you can succeed. So that's where the concept of Unknown 16 started to build. But as I soon started to went along, and especially after my world championship, it was sort of like falling dominoes, right? After one event came another and then so on and so forth. So soon after that, I was presented with the opportunity. Um, I learned about the hackathon Read with the Earth, which is which allowed me to take my skill sets in technology and also combine it with climate change, an issue that I'm really passionate about. And soon I started to learn more about the UN SDGs and how all the different solutions that are out there and how they're taking technology, emerging tech like artificial intelligence and blockchain to solve these real life issues. That's when I started to develop a lot of programs like my app iBloom that allows you that addresses climate change by bringing together communities and sort of like how can technology solve and be part of these UN SDGs. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was just a piece of falling dominoes and prior to student develop the idea of different apps to help address this. So I think you said something that's really interesting here in envisioning iBloom. Um, what were the things that you wanted to do with the application that you built and how did you then approach building the application in order to fit into the problem that you wanted to solve? So something that, you know, everybody, everybody knows about, almost everybody knows about climate change and the issues that we're facing, but who, like out of all of us, who actually goes out and takes action for it, right? We're all sitting here, we're all reading the news, right? But who actually is going outside and doing something? And everybody knows that we all have our busy schedules, we all have our priorities. So uh, this question popped up, how can I incentivize people to do something for climate change? And that's where this app by the came in, where I'm going to incentivize people through coupons by having coupon deals presented to a person when they take an action step, like either planting a tree, donating money, or buying a sustainable product. So whenever they, they do these three options, they get incentivized through coupon deals, like they earn points. And this method is called gamification. So it kind of like all barred together where everybody's kind of like a win-win situation where, you know, it's okay if you're not that, you know, interested or like you're not, if you don't know too much about climate change or it's too inconvenient for you, that's okay because now you have this coupon deal for your next grocery shopping. So it's like, you know, even if that's not your top priority, I'm going to present you with something that is. So again, it's like a win-win situation. So that was like my main fact. I wanted to incorporate all factors and all kind of audiences mindsets mm -hmm. building iBloom. So, and when I was developing it, I dealt with through React Native. Um, it's an app development program that allows you to code for both iOS and Android. So that's something that, you know, helped really helped me efficiently build the app and, you know, incorporate different kind of parts like coupon deals. And especially for businesses that are part of the platform, we added something that allows a user to give them review ratings based on how sustainable their business is. And that way, you know, when also when businesses are giving coupons to anybody that takes action for climate change, they're also helping their um, social responsibility, right, as a company itself. So again, kind of like a win-win situation, I really wanted to incorporate all kinds of factors that when it like from people's mindsets to, you know, what are people's priorities into developing iBloom. It's very interesting. It sounds like you had a lot of inspiration from the pro solving the problem itself. Um, and I think that's really wonderful. And I also think that you take this essence of inspiration out into the community, not just through iBloom, but also, also through the projects that you, um, that you enact via Unknown 16, um, educating young people in the community about um, technology, let's say themes or potential career paths or um, building skills that one might need to pursue a career in technology. And, and this is really lovely. 
I, I wonder though, um, who or, or what inspires you? So when I talked about taking classes in my community, it's actually just my students that inspire me. Um, actually something I want to mention is that the year after that in ninth grade on my robotics team, we actually partnered up with this younger generation, um, all girls team. So then we had about 12 girls on our team out of 16 members. So that was kind of like a really uplifting moment, like, you know, something we can actually make a difference. And since those girls are a bit younger, actually just a year younger than me, they still refer to me as their mentor, someone that helped them through the robotics journey. And just having that mentorship title that I was able to impact or change someone's life by helping them, by helping them build their confidence so they can see really kind of inspired me to, you know, go out and do more, you know. So really just those students that I was able to impact were my inspiration. That's beautiful. I was thinking about your supergirls in and elements of inspiration because um I thought it was a wise approach when I when I was looking into unknown16.com when you and I were being introduced. I I was thinking about how one would go about engaging young people. And um, as we're talking about inspiration and your inspiration and mentorship of younger women, um, I, I thought it, maybe it's good if you could explain a little bit more about the Supergirls and what they represent. So when I was thinking of Supergirls, well, when people think of programming or coding, well, programming or STEM, you know, they usually won't think of the programming aspect of it, right? The decoding on your computer. But there's actually a lot more to that. So my three supergirls, Curie, who represents curiosity, Ia, who represents being passionate, and Ina, who represents being imaginative, they kind of represent the different aspects, the different characteristics that are brought into, you know, they're brought incorporated when you're trying to programming or develop a new solution. So you have... Like, um, you know, you mentioned in your earlier points when you were giving advice. So again, just being curious, right? Um, just you're, you're passionate, right? You have this idea, you have this question in mind. So just go out, research, right? Don't just think of it as an obstacle when you have a question, but think of it as an opportunity to do something about it. So that's where curious, um, curie comes in, right? You're curious and you want to be creative. You want to be creative with what your question is and how you want to go about it. And again, as I was passionate about climate change, it's not, don't like, um, you never should be pressured by anyone outside other than yourself, right? There might be other um, aspects in your environment that might influence you, but it's really, um, in the end, it's going to be your decision. So if it's not something that you're passionate about, the end result might not turn out as good because you haven't put in all your effort into it. So I was, you know, passionate about climate change as it was also like a personal issue for me. So I put in all my effort into developing iBloom and that's what Pia represents. And Ina, you know, you don't want to just be in the box. You want to think outside of the box. So being imaginative, you know, just, just being yourself and really coming up with an out of box solution. I, um, I have a young daughter and I really, I really hope that she encounters over her journey, uh, a woman who inspires her in a way that you're inspiring me. Um, I think that um, your outreach into the community um, of younger people and touching young women when they are quite young girls, in fact, um, this is incredibly valuable. I, I wonder what my own journey would have been had I encountered a Rushi when I was, when I was in elementary school or, or in middle school. Um, and I'm wondering, since you're also so passionate about climate action, do you, during your discussions with young people, also touch on this very important topic? So actually something that I've introduced in the classes that I take at local libraries is actually incorporating um, real life, you know, problems into your projects. 
So for the younger kids, when I teach them Scratch, which is like the foundation of programming, we actually say that, okay, well, you know, you guys know about recycling, right? Well, how can you incorporate rice recycling in your projects? And yeah, I would love to share some of the projects that they've built over you. Um, I mean, they're built with you. It's like, you know, dropping the right um, item into the correct recycling bin, right? Or there's a project that a student made where there's garbage falling from the sky and in, into the ocean, and you sort of have to pick it up with the net. So, you know, just being in that mindset and me being able to motivate them to think like that, it's kind of like, you know, we can actually like, you know, we have a, we have a, fu they have a future, right? They can do something about the future. And this is our generation that's going to really be impacted by the decisions we make today. So, you know, those, they, they, these are kind of like little stepping stones stepping stones so whether it be climate change or whatever whatever they're passionate about one of the students is you know passionate about water right shortage of water so you know she made a project regarding that and how we can save pro um, water so you know just being in that mindset and being able to think like that is what's most important I think it's really special I keep hearing both of our themes being exploring your passions and and doing so with a creative and um, curious mindset. And I, I hope um, that people who would listen to our, our discussion would maybe also bring people who are young and within their lives um, to, to consider some of the themes that we're discussing and to check out unknown16.com and check out the Supergirls and see how that they could be involved in some of the projects um, that you are undertaking and check to see how they could be involved in some of the climate action projects, iBloom, things of that nature. So I appreciate that we had some time to talk today um, so that you could explain more about how you came to some of these solutions and that I could talk a little bit more too about the things that I've done as a course of my career and um, and also what I'm doing today at UNICC and some of the interesting projects that, that we're undertaking too. Definitely, I mean, thank you so much. You know, um, with the advice that you gave and especially your project in Syria and how you were able to help so many women and children by providing them with resources that really inspired me, right? You know, especially in, um, in such an advanced technology field, how you're able to make such a great impact. I mean, again, I would love to connect with you again in the future to help in some of these projects. So again, that wraps up our session for Talking Tech, Women and Girls in ICT. Thank you again. Thank you so much, Ms. Emily Bennett. I really enjoyed our chat today. And thanks so much for our viewers for watching. <laughs>